our modern life is made up of thousands of materials. Materials that are affecting our environment. Materials can be found everywhere. And in light of climate reports and how we use the Earth resources today, we need to go towards a sustainable society. From the very beginning, the discovery of new materials has advanced our civilization. With steel, we built our new societies. Glass changed how we lived and how we looked at the world. Silicon gave us microprocessors and the whole digital revolution. Now it is time to make the world sustainable. And this time too, the change will come through new materials. In WISE, Wallenberg Initiative Materials Science for Sustainability, researchers from universities all over Sweden are coming together to develop new sustainable materials and environmentally friendly manufacturing methods, all enabled through a research investment of 270 million euros from the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation. My first reaction was, this is exactly what we are looking for, and this is the most timely investment of money in research. There are many big problems that we need to deal with in society, and this gives us hope that we can actually make it. The director of the entire WISE program is Magnus Bergren. This is one of the largest efforts ever in the Swedish history in nature science and this will make a huge difference to derive a new society where we have eco-friendly techniques for energy and for circular materials. We find Magnus' own materials laboratory here at Campus Norrköping. Among other things, his team is developing completely recyclable batteries, which are made using a waste product from the paper industry, lignin. Lignin is a natural material. It's produced in plants and also in trees. It's a material that can be processed at large scale. But on top of that, it also includes electrochemical and chemical properties so that we can store electrical charge in huge volumes. The scientists turn the lignin into a printing paste that can easily be printed on large sheets, just like books or newspapers but now they are printing batteries. It's time for lamination, yes. put it together and... And, uh, present. and after many experiments and testing, they have finally succeeded. I still remember the first time when, when we saw the data, the, the charge storage data of, of including lignin in our batteries. Not only that it worked, but it also produced the same specification, so it makes it competitive to existing technologies, and this will now make future battery technology all green. This was the first step toward a functional, fully recyclable paper battery. Today, they have several different variants of the battery. The thickness of the lignin electrodes, they match the solar cell, so you can harvest energy. Yeah, these two are quite good fellows. They, they match each other very well. Paper batteries has a fantastic future. These will be produced at large volumes and included in many different products, such as in packages and so on. And we are done with the package. We can throw it away since the battery is all green. Magnus's team started with a waste product when they created their battery. But when scientists develop new materials, they can also begin from a completely different end. Johanna Rosean builds with atoms. When we want to create a new material, we start from scratch. We combine atoms in different structures, and this gives a huge number of different combinations. Johanna's team at Lin Sherping University build their atomic models in the computer. And when she starts creating a new material, she doesn't always know what it will be used for. Sometimes it's just an idea. Can we build a material in this way? Johanna can start with up to 100,000 variations of a material. The calculations are enormous. Lin Sherping's supercomputer needs time to figure out which materials can be the most sustainable and best. After several weeks of calculations, about 10 candidates remain. In 
the lab, we create our materials. And there it's very interesting to see if the computer simulations can be realized. One advantage of Johanna's super thin materials is that they have such a large surface area that just one teaspoon of the material is equal to the area of an entire football field. This surface can be used for many things. This is a material based on titanium and carbon, and it has a lot of potential for many different things. For example, it can capture carbon dioxide. This material is just one example of the goal for new research to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Here as well, in a lab at KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, a new material is being developed that could be important in the fight against climate change. The sample is ready. We just need to clean up, then we can take it out and go to the measurement. It is Martin Monson who leads the research, and he loves connecting theory with experiments. Our research is a little bit like cooking. So you start off with the original recipe, and this is your idea. And then you, you do an experiment to try out your recipe. And then you analyze the results, and, and this tells us if we need to improve it and which direction we should improve it. The process begins theoretically with a clear goal, that the material should be able to store large amounts of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a form of energy whose green variant can be produced from water and whose exhaust gases are also just water. It sounds fantastic, but hydrogen also has its drawbacks. And one of them is, of course, if you store it as a gas, it takes very large volume. It's also kind of, there are some safety issues because it's very reactive. So this is what we try to avoid. To solve this problem, they are developing a porous carbon material that will store hydrogen. An electron microscope reveals that the carbon material looks like a sponge with pores. Here we can see a structure on one particle. This is very nice porosity also. Looks nice. When the hydrogen gas is pushed in, the atoms are stored on the surfaces in the pores. The hydrogen then takes up less space and cannot explode either. Porosity. It's a good sample, I think. Yeah, I've been showing. The material can therefore be used in a safe hydrogen tank in the cars of the future, and perhaps even in ships and airplanes as well. The main goal of our research is basically to optimize the material. And by that we mean that we want to store as much hydrogen as possible inside the material. We would like to be able to insert and extract the hydrogen as efficient as possible. And this means at lower pressures and lower temperatures that we can do now. Martin's team is now trying to combine the carbon with metals in various composite materials. It looks promising, so we see that the, these composites are able to release hydrogen already at much lower temperatures. Based on that, we know very well where to move forward and even further enhance these materials and get them closer to a prototype. But WISE is not only about inventing new materials. It is also about reusing old ones in a better way. How is it going, Maria, today? No, the reaction is going good, as expected. At Stockholm University, Aji Matthews' team is taking recycling one step further into the future. Recycling is when you do a process to get a material which is of the same value as what you started with. But then when you do upcycling, we get a product which is much more valuable than what you started with. So that is what we are trying to do here. With upcycling, Aji's team uses old scraps of fabric. Cotton consists of cellulose, long molecules that can be used as building blocks for new materials. But first, the fabric must be broken down chemically so that the cellulose is released. So during the chemical process, we are actually converting the cotton in the textile into cellulose nanocrystals. When the cellulose is purified through several steps, the team ends up with a liquid containing extremely small crystals. 
we cannot see the nanostructures through with naked eyes but if you look through this cross polarized filters we see the optical phenomenon which indicates nanoparticles the cellulose from the cotton is so small that it is now considered a nanomaterial that is pieces no larger than one millionth of a millimeter therefore an atomic microscope is required to be able to study the material thoroughly and did you measure the sizes? Looks interesting. Yeah, yeah, this around 150 nanometers. Aji's team is already using similar nanocellulose when they 3D print a new type of water filter. The nanomaterial is so small that it can capture microplastics and chemicals that are in polluted water. I think definitely upcycling will be important for all the industries in the future. The main reason is that we want to keep the resources in the loop for as long as possible. The new climate smart materials are an important goal for WISE. And Magnus Berggren's batteries are one example already existing as a finished product. But the biggest gain is not just new products. Even more important is, in fact, the new generation of skilled people, young scientists, that will go out and blaze the trail for a whole new energy technology, circular materials, and also materials for the climate in academia, in industry, and also in the society. The research school will make room for hundreds of new young scientists. And the many research groups will work in universities all over Sweden. WISE is the largest initiative in material science in Sweden to date, where universities and industries will work together towards a common goal, which is a sustainable society.